Hi, my name is Tegan Gorley and I attend Drake University. Before I share my testimony, I would like to pray if you will bow your heads with me. Dear God, I thank you for who you are, Lord. Thank you for revealing yourself to me and to other people in this room, Lord. Thank you for your unconditional love and the way you work in your in our lives so that you can show yourself to us, Lord. Thank you for letting us find freedom in you, Lord. And I pray that if I don't say anything that honors you, Lord, that it will fall to the ground. Um, in your name I pray, amen. So growing up, my family and I attended church weekly, and I attended a Catholic school where I was regularly tested on my knowledge of the Bible. I found my worth in academics, control, and pride. I knew that Jesus had died for my sins and that God had the power to send me to hell, but that, that my knowledge of the Bible and doing good things would get me into heaven. During my junior year of high school, I started to struggle in my classes. Pride was and still is a huge sin in my life, so I didn't take this well and fell into anxiety and depression. To escape from feeling like a failure, I filled my entire schedule up with work and any extracurricular activity that seemed like it would hide the fact that I was struggling so much in my personal life. At night, in secret, I also turned to pornography to escape feeling like a failure. I knew this was wrong, but didn't want to admit it to myself. The saddest part about having sexual sin in your life is that you inherently know that it is wrong, and you think that you can stop whenever you want. The truth is, by our own will, we can't overcome an addiction to pornography, but with the Lord's help, we can. Romans 2, 14 through 16 states, For when Gentiles, who do not have the law, by nature, do what the law requires, they are a law to themselves, even though they do not have the law. They show that the work of the law is written on their hearts, while their conscience also bears witness, and their conflicting thoughts accuse or even excuse them on that day when, according to the gospel, God judges the secrets of men by Christ Jesus. Praise God that, though I did not know him, he delivered me from the sin while I was still in high school. Throughout my junior and senior years in high school, I attended counseling through a local church. While waiting for appointments, I would see girls in college coming together to read the Bible and talk about how God was working in their lives. I was intrigued because this was the first time I had seen girls close to my age eager to learn about and glorify God by their own doing, not because their parents made them. This planted the first seed in my heart about who God was. Coming to Drake, I was incredibly lost and was looking for hope in my pride and a new start to becoming the girl everybody envied. Instead, when I came to campus, I was connected with Campus Fellowship. Through reading with Val and Jolene, I started to see my need for a savior and that God wanted a personal relationship with me. This past January, I overindulged in alcohol three times. I knew that this was wrong and that I should not be doing it, but I ignored the convictions of the Holy Spirit to satisfy my own selfish desires. Ephesians 5.18 states, and Don't get drunk with wine, which leads to reckless living, but be filled by the Holy Spirit. In my stubbornness and pride, I wanted to live life for myself, fully knowing that God's plan is better than mine. Isaiah 55, 8 says, Indeed, my plans are not like your plans, and my deeds are not like your deeds. For just as the sky is higher than the earth, so my deeds are superior to your deeds, and my plans superior to your plans. I beg you, if you know in your heart that something you want to do is wrong, but don't understand why, please go and talk with someone that you trust who has given their life to Christ. Proverbs 14.12 says, There is a way that seems right to a person, but its end is the way that leads to death. Proverbs 4.14-15 4, says, Do not enter the path of the wicked or walk in the way of those who are evil. Avoid it. Do not go on it. Turn away from it and go on. I can tell you from experience that God's way is always better than our way, and that God's truth is meant to protect us from ourselves. Two year, months ago, I was meeting with Jess, and God working through her, my pride, jealousy, and ungratefulness was revealed to me. I was able to see just how badly I truly needed God's grace and how undeserving of it I was. I realized that Christ died for me while knowing all of the sins I would continue to commit, past, present, and future. Matthew 23, verses 11 and 12 state, The greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. I can't tell you when I fully accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. I think it was many little moments of Christ changing my heart throughout this past year that led me to decide that I wanted to live the rest of my life serving and glorifying Him. There is no other God than my God who could ever forgive me for the multitude of sins that I have already committed against Him. There is only one person who could ever pay for all the sins that I have committed. That person is Jesus Christ. Jesus sacrificed himself to provide atonement for my sins, was mocked, tortured, and put up on the cross by people who rejected him. When he came to save them from their sin, 
When Jesus was dying for our sins, he never once hated or wished ill upon us. John 13, 1 says, Before the Passover festival, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them till the end. After everything he's done for me, how could I not want to serve God with all my being for the rest of my life? If you have any questions or would like to talk about anything that I have shared, I would be more than happy to talk with you. Thank you.